Now, if someone asks you for a thingamabob, or if they suggest there's a bit of a kerfuffle going on outside, perhaps you need to skedaddle, or if you're feeling rather flummoxed, then what on earth am I going on about? Yes, these really are English words. Yes, we really do still use them in day-to-day -day English, but no, it's unlikely that you've ever come across them in an English course book. It might be if you've had a great teacher, she's taught you a few of these words, but by far, most of these words, the vocabulary that I'm going to teach you today, you have never heard of. I'm taking a big risk saying that, but I have literally searched high and low for 15 of the strangest English words, the weirdest and most wonderful words we have in English, but words that I hope will actually come in handy. Not much point me teaching you vocabulary if you can't even use it. So today's lesson, 15 words, nouns, adjectives, and verbs to help you sound, well, definitely a little bit more native, but also to really impress your teacher. Welcome back to the channel. And don't forget, before we get started, do click a subscribe and of course that notifications bell so that you are notified when we upload new lessons. And of course, if you want to learn a little bit more about Sabra and me, you can always check out our website, www.loveenglish.co.uk or our social media, Instagram and Facebook. Why not connect with us there to learn more about English and us? Right, if you're not feeling too lackadaisical, it's time to get on with the lesson. Now, number one, thingamabob, thingamabob. Now, sometimes I would actually say thingamy bob but I don't think that's actually correct. It's just the way I sometimes say the word. You choose. It's the same. People will understand, well, native English people will understand what you're talking about. Thingamabob is a word we particularly use in spoken English. You wouldn't find it written anywhere as frequently, but essentially when we don't know the name for something, perhaps a tool or an item or the word has just fallen out of our head for some reason. Thingamabob is what we say when we don't remember what it's called. So it's technically a noun, I guess, but it's a word that I think could be very, very practical, particularly if you don't remember the word in English. But remember, it is for a noun, for an item, for a thing, as in thingamabob. I need one of those red thingamabobs to finish the job. Do you know what I mean, what I'm talking about? Oh, you know the one, the little tiny thingamabob. The accountant was accused of some financial shenanigans. Shenanigans. Number two, a fantastic word. Again, another noun. And it essentially is referring to dishonest actions. Secret or dishonest actions or maneuverings. Now, we could also use this when we're talking to children. It can be referring to being secretive and getting up to mischief when perhaps in a more fun, light-hearted way. It's rather quiet up there. What shenanigans are the children up to again? So it can be mischief in a humorous way when used in the context of often children. Number three, kerfuffle, kerfuffle. What is all the kerfuffle about outside? When there's a fuss or bother going on, perhaps even a small argument or disagreement. And basically, there's a lot of noise going on and you don't know why. You can refer to it being a kerfuffle. There was a right kerfuffle in the cafe when someone tried to skip the line. There were so many people complaining. So we'd often use that expression, a right kerfuffle, meaning it was a real kerfuffle, a real, a real kind of uh, disruption. Kerfuffle. Number four. Now, this is one that you probably wouldn't use unless you're a little bit older, older than me, that is a whippersnapper. If you refer to somebody being a whippersnapper, you're telling them that they're very young, inexperienced perhaps, and someone that often shows maybe a little bit too much confidence. It may even be that they're not showing a lot of respect to their elders, meaning people older than them. You young whippersnappers, no respect for the elderly these days. I'm not going to have some young whippersnapper tell me what to do. I really do feel I need an older person to use this expression. I don't think I'm quite old enough to use the word whippersnapper. 
And again, I would say it's very old English. It's not a word that I would come across very often, but you might in fact hear it in perhaps a television series or a film. So good to know. Right, number five, and I actually came across this word yesterday. I'd never heard of it before. I think the reason being that it is used more in America. So in American English, you let me know if any of you are familiar with American English or spent time in the US then comment and share, have you heard this expression used and how? Lollygag, lollygag. Now, when I heard this, I thought lolly and to gag is when you nearly wanna be sick. So it's like, uh, uh. sorry, that wasn't very pleasant, but that's essentially what gagging is. You kind of, it's a reflex. So lollygag actually has nothing to do with a lolly or gagging. It simply means to be idle or lazy. Idle or lazy. Idle is a nice formal word for lazy. Now I've heard it used as like a verb, so in the continuous form as well. Stop lollygagging, it's time to get going, it's nearly time for school, stop lollygagging. I suppose, as with most English words, you can adapt it and change it to how you might want to use it. It might even be possible to say someone is a lollygagger, I don't know, let me know, have you heard this expression before? Can it be used as a noun to describe somebody? It's definitely used as a verb, to lollygag, to be lazy, idle. Stop lollygagging, it is time for school. Number six, a little bit like kerfuffle, perhaps a little louder in fact, a hullabaloo. A hullabaloo, I love the sound of some of these words, hullabaloo. So when there is a hullabaloo, noun, there is a big commotion, something's going on, a disruption of some sort. The demonstrators were making a real hullabaloo outside parliament. Now hullabaloo can in fact refer to people in this case as being quite annoyed or angry about something. So it could be used in more serious circumstances. That's why it's actually stronger than kerfuffle, a hullabaloo. You could also use it to refer to when people make a lot of angry comments in public. So for example, at the moment, we've seen a lot of protests globally, whether that's for President Trump or even for the COVID vaccine and anti-maskers making what we could say is perhaps a hullabaloo outside protesting. Number seven, I think this is my favorite sounding word of the 15, cacophony, cacophony. So there's a k -k cacophony, cacophony. Now I've actually heard this used by David Attenborough in one of his documentaries. Highly recommend David Attenborough documentaries, great for your English too. And he spoke of a cacophony of sounds from the rainforest. Think about the birds chirping, the monkeys, what do monkeys do? They, I don't know, make funny sounds, but you get the idea. Lots of different sounds coming together to be quite noisy. You could use the expression, what a cacophony. So lots of different sounds coming together to be quite noisy, but it's a beautiful word in fact, I really do like it. Comment below, when have you come across a cacophony of sounds? Could also be perhaps somewhere like a, a concert, before the music starts, there's the cacophony of people talking, laughing, singing, that kind of thing. Number eight, a very useful verb to skedaddle, skedaddle. Again, a nice sk, skedaddle. Now, if you need to skedaddle, you need to go somewhere quickly and very fast. I'm really sorry, I've got to skedaddle, I'm gonna be late for a meeting if not. Or you might use it to talk about children when they're making a bit of a kerfuffle. Oh, go on kids, skedaddle, get out of here. Number nine, gobbledygook, gobbledygook. Yes, it's a word, I promise you, all of these are real words. You can even Google them and check or look in a dictionary, gobbledygook. Now, the official definition of this noun is a language that sounds official and important, but in fact, doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, in general, I would use this when someone's talking or someone has said something and I found it very difficult to follow what they were saying. They kind of sounded like they were talking a load of gobbledygook. So you wouldn't necessarily say it to somebody's face. Like, what, what are you talking about? This is all gobbledygook. Don't do that because you're saying they're not making any sense. It could be quite rude. But you might come out of the meeting and say, well, that was a load of gobbledygook. What did we actually talk about? Now, I personally find that a lot of computer manuals really are a lot of gobbledygook. I find them very hard to follow and understand. Now, on a similar line, gibberish, gibberish. Again, another noun. You could say that someone is talking gibberish. 
So perhaps if someone gets very, very drunk, and they kind of talk you like this, how I love you, do I love you? Okay, <laughs> they're talking gibberish. It doesn't make much sense. It is talking about the spoken word and making no sense can't be understood. Equally so, you could use it in a perhaps more light-hearted way to say, oh, I'm so nervous on my blind date. I just started talking gibberish. I don't even know what I was saying. It was just, it was gibberish. So it could be literal gibberish. Love you describe. Okay. Or it could be like you felt like you were talking gibberish or someone was talking gibberish because they were hard to follow. Now, number 11, poppycock, poppycock is actually referring to something being nonsense or even not true. Someone could be lying. I would say that this is a word we'd often associate with some of the upper classes. It's very old English. I'd suggest we don't actually use it very much anymore, in fact. But again, you might hear it in a film or television series. He dismissed the allegations as absolute poppycock. So he said in a kind of formal, polite way that this wasn't true and it was completely nonsense. Number 12, I know this word, but I never use it. Discombobulate, discombobulate. You might enjoy the sound, discombobulate, as many of these words do sound quite lovely to say and weird, of course, strange. But to be discombobulated or to discombobulate, could you use it as a verb? Yes, um, basically means to be confused. It's confusing. It could also be to make someone feel uncomfortable. Her attitude in the classroom completely discombobulated the teacher. She didn't know whether she was interested or sleeping. Bizarre behavior. Now, unlike discombobulate, number 13, flummox, to flummox somebody, a verb, or to be flummoxed, an adjective. You wouldn't say something is flummoxing. No, I wouldn't use it in that way, but I would definitely use it to describe how I felt. I was rather flummoxed by her behavior. To be confused. Students can often be flummoxed by the grammar. It's often in a way that you confuse someone and they don't know how to react or to respond. I was so flummoxed by her lesson that I really didn't know how to do the homework. So if you're feeling very discombobulated or being discombobulated, then you'd also be flummoxed. They're very similar, but I would definitely say that flummox is a word we'd use more often. Number 14, lackadaisical. Lackadaisical, adjective meaning lazy can't be bothered, and generally with no enthusiasm. The food in the restaurant was amazing, but the service, rather lackadaisical if you ask me. The waiters really didn't seem to care about what they were doing. And finally, number 15, quite a new word and a good example of how English is always evolving, a frankenfood, or frankenfood. It could be countable or uncountable, essentially. It's a noun referring to food that has been genetically modified. So it comes, if some of you have ever read the novel Frankenstein, from the idea of something being unnatural, created by science. So if you describe a Franken food, you're describing a product that definitely is not organic and has been genetically modified. Oof, I really wouldn't eat there. They serve all that Franken food, don't they? I prefer to go organic myself. So there we have it, 15 weird, wonderful, and I think rather lovely sounding words that are quite fun to get your tongue around and will certainly impress any English teacher or native speaker. So if you do want to try using, practicing some of those words, definitely do it when you're speaking. But of course, you can also comment in the comment section below and put it with some examples. Remember, my top tip is always to personalize the language. And why not share a weird and wonderful word from your language. Doesn't matter what language it is, I wanna hear it. A word that you think no one would have heard of, even if they are perhaps a more advanced speaker of your language. Maybe not a native though. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you very soon with actually a lot of grammar lessons that hopefully won't leave you feeling rather flummoxed.